only one of three people can lead Egypt in the correct and right direction. NASA consolidates power. Whoa, 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 whoa. What just happened? Egyptian Navy. Israel declared Israel invades the Sinai. The powers of Britain and France proposed a ceasefire. Nonsense. No. We're declining the ceasefire. Oh my god, France and the UK just declared war on us. We won. Egyptian victory. We have defeated the Zionist threat. The formation of the UAR will be the start of the unification of the Arabs and will be a hallmark in history, finally uniting a people long divided. And there we have it, two Arab countries uniting into one and hoping that we can unite the rest of the Arabian lands. <laughs> What's up guys? It's your boy Kurt. Can you imagine if I started every video like that? Anyway, welcome back to part two of Egypt's Cold War, The Iron Curtain. Now, if you haven't watched part one, go and watch it. It's the last video I uploaded on my channel uh, before this one. So go watch it and come back. Here we are going to try and navigate through the six day war and reunite all of the Arabian lands. Now, really quickly, before we get into the video, please like and subscribe. A lot of time and effort goes into these videos and I'd really appreciate it if you just did one of those things. And without further ado, let's get straight into the video. It is 1960 and we begin as the United Arab Republic just as we finished off in part one except there's some small changes because this isn't a continuation of the same timeline this is just me starting from 1960 in the same mod now I went to check if Minesweeper was still in the Arab League uh, tab thing and uh, yep. yeah we still got Minesweeper oh look at that okay hang on that's a mine but that's now I was determined to beat Minesweeper this time I would not let it get the better of me which means that isn't a mine nor is that nor is that but that has to be a mine. That is a mine right there. Now I got to the point where I think I won. Everything left I thought was a mine. So I just took that as a win. Two, there's a mine there and mine there. And this is touching two. There's a mine there and mine there. Yeah, I've won. That's it. Oh, I'm taking that as a win. That's a win. All right, we beat it. Okay, yes, there we go. We beat Minesweeper. We can get out of here now. With Minesweeper out of the way, it was time to actually start playing Hearts of Iron 4. Okay, so we have obviously NASA in charge. We got all of the same buffs that we got when uh, we had him in power. Incompetent army officers. Okay. Yep. That's that's cool. Arab League member again. Obviously, that's good. Inflation rate three percent. Antiquated health system. Uh, and and antiquated. I don't even. Okay. Martial law. <laughs> All right. And national resource modifiers. I have no idea what half of that even means. I mean, it's okay though. You can ignore it, right? The NASA era. Refers to a period of Egyptian history after the revolution of 52. This period was marked by a wave of modernization, socialist reform, and staunch advocacy for pan-Arab nationalism. This time, it would be considered a golden age of culture, and Egyptian prosperity in Egypt would be at the height of its regional power. 100 political power, hey! I figured out what to build in this mod. The industrial parks are basically just civilian factories, so I started getting onto them right away. I can make industrial parks faster. Yes, I'm building industrial parks now because they actually give us uh what do they give us again provides yeah industry so we get more civilian factories technically after switching to free trade and fiddling around with research i thought i knew what i was doing when it came to these government policy things but uh no it turns out i don't we can do that we get less consumer goods right i've changed it boom one percent so now if we go to our it's the same okay never mind i thought i knew what i was doing nope no i don't anyway uh we could either stack the government with egyptians we have stability and nationalist populism or we could just integrate the uh the bathist representation i don't know man but this gives us stability anyway so yeah let's do that let's integrate the syrian population thank god i chose to do that one because if i had stacked the government with egyptians there syria would have caused a civil war and i really want to avoid that i increased my military spending and because it's 1960 the berlin wall uh was was built oh they've actually got it here is this like an actual historical image of it being built that's crazy man it's just like a whole wall I cannot believe that happened. You know, learning about history is always so crazy because it's like, this is the stuff that was going down before I was born. Really? Like, this is what happened, man? Like, and if there's any devs watching this, I have an idea. They should have like a little wall here. That'd be so cool if they just had a little wall just on the map. There you go. There's my input. Anyway, I wanted to pay off my debt as quick as possible because it just bugs me having debt. And we're doing a lot better financially than we were in part one. All right, we got a lot of money now. It wasn't long after the Berlin Wall was built that President Kennedy came into office. Oh, Ask Kennedy. What your country can do for this you. is sick. Ask what you can do for your country. My fellow citizens. <laughs> okay, very cool. We got uh, Kennedy in charge. Prepare for the, the Cuba Missile Crisis. Is that going to be something that happens? Never be, never be, never be 
I could try and industrialize some places, but I figured out why I was in debt so much last video. It's because I clicked every single one of these and it actually cost money. I just thought you could do it for free. I just thought it, I, I, I'm an idiot, but that's why I was in like a, a thousand billion dollars of debt because I was just upgrading everything I could, but it cost 90 billion to do that, to, to develop it from pre-industrial. So I'm going to keep all the ones next to the Nile developed, which they already are. Uh, and yeah, we're just, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna upgrade any states, okay? It's too expensive. I literally just figured this out. No one told me in the comments this is why I was in so much debt, but it's okay because uh, you live and you learn, I guess. I was looking at the factions map mode to see if there was any change, really. No, we still got the Warsaw Pact. It looks like roughly the same, and the French faction has shrunk, so that's a bit smaller now. And I want to go to Plurism, so we get 10% stability. Wait, we just lost stability. Oh no, we gained it, we gained it. We lost war support, that was it. I'm getting the hang of it, slowly but surely. Anyway, we have so much money and I don't know what to do with it. Uh, I decided to buy infantry equipment because I was struggling to produce it. Negotiate arms contracts. We're gonna go to the Eastern Block because they're most likely to. Yeah, I just want low tier infantry and weapons. Infantry equipment, tier one. 50 billion for 10,000, I don't want that much. 10 billion, right? 10 billion. We're spending 10 billion to the Eastern Block to get some guns. Perfect, there we are. And that gives us a surplus. Beautiful. So we can train another dude. Ten. That's the, the most expensive division ever. <laughs> They're literally the most expensive division ever. Okay. You know, come to think of it, that was probably the biggest waste of money. A 10 billion for like, what, how many? 2,000? I could have just waited. I think we should do more spending because we're getting a lot of money and we're, I don't really know what to do with it. Basic services. Infrastructure. No. Medical. Product efficiency cap goes up. You know what? That's not bad. Cost per capita. 160%. I didn't know what to do with all this money. I'd already paid off all my debt and it was just kind of lying around. So I just decided to increase funding of things and I guess that's a good way to spend it. Oh! Oh my gosh, the Tsar bomb has been tested. The largest nuclear bomb ever in existence that has been tested. That, that was tested, not ever, theoretically. For the rest of this year, I just worked on my economy and spent money because there's nothing really else to do. Worked through my focus tree until we got to the good stuff. Look at that, man. Another research slot here. Like what? I, I'm just so distracted by all these other trees that I'm not even going down my main tree. I should do that. I wanted to test whether the national focuses could change my policies because I wasn't sure of this and it would be really cool if it did. Okay, we strengthened unions. Okay, yeah, look, it added pro-union and state unions. Okay, so it does change. National focus. Okay, good. As we continue down our focus tree, uh, we dislike Saudi Arabia more and more. I think it's because they got a monarchy and we're like anti-monarchy, which is historical, you know, because as I was doing my research for this video, I found I found this interview of NASA. It wasn't an interview. I think it might have been a, uh, a speech or something. And he compared the crown of Saudi Arabia to being someone's shoe. Anyway, we're becoming more and more socialist and pan-Arabism is becoming more and more evident and popular in our countries. And the next step would be, well, we got to deal with Israel. <laughs> Guys, guys, I found where I can hang on. Let me stop this music. I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to the normal Hoi4 music. There we go. Okay, I think I, I found where I can cr increase the tax rate. Look at this. 35% we get more money. Now I decided to decrease the tax rate because why not? I mean, I had too much money anyway and I want to be nice. I, I'm surprised we didn't get stability out of it though. We just got some other bonuses. Oh, the Arab League's expanded. Look at this. We got the whole of... Oh, because they're independent now. That's beautiful. Soon the Arab League will just be me. The National Charter was a proposal introduced by President Nasser for further modernization and reforms, primarily concerned with continued land reform, expansion of worker power, and healthcare. It would mark the next step in Egyptian, pol Egyptian policy toward a modern and powerful nation. I realized I don't have to pay for guns, right? I don't have to spend billions of dollars on buying 2,000 infantry equipment. I can just get it on the international market. I can't believe I didn't think of this. Like, I don't need to buy it through the decisions and using money. I can just use my, like, building stuff. Like, I can buy 300 Spanish infantry equipment. Okay, that's enough. Yeah, we're buying stuff. It's gonna take one delivery. And I'm still increasing military spending as much as I can. I'm gonna make sure that the military spending is the number one priority of where all our money goes because I'm not spending it on healthcare. Why would I... Why, who wants... I can't get this. Where's this... Ma okay. Let's actually look for this magnetic core memory. Would it be here? Magnetic core memory. I don't know where this mag magnetic core memory is. Is it in computers? It sounds like it would be in computers. Here. 
I need it. There it is. Okay. That took me so long to find. You guys have no idea. I spent like 20 minutes looking for that thing. I, I couldn't improve my artillery or guns or anything if I didn't have that. So it was kind of annoying. Whoa. Oh, he just got assassinated. He just got assassinated. What was the Cuban Missile Crisis? That didn't happen? That didn't happen? Okay. Now I decided to put special forces in my regular infantry division because as we spend more on military spending, then we can actually have a higher special forces cap, meaning it doesn't really matter. I mean, all of our divisions can just be special forces. It's great. Not much really happened the rest of this year. The Vietnam War started, so that was pretty interesting. And we got a new American president, Goldwater. I don't know, I've never heard of him anyway. But moving on to 1965, because it becomes more interesting. <laughs> Now we are far enough down our focus tree that we could close the Straits of Tehran now if we wanted to. However, it is too early because the Sinai remains demilitarized and as soon as we close the Straits of Tehran, Israel will declare war on us and the Six Day War will begin. And as that is still demilitarized, we will not be able to defend ourselves. How can I undemilitarize land? Now at this point I was getting concerned because I didn't know how to demilitarize land. But then I went to Google and it turns out it just it just happens by an event, so it's okay. Hang on, I want to purchase some tanks. Import Oh, 250 Eastern Bloc PT-76. Soviet-made light tank, more light tanks. And at this point, I decided it might be a good idea that I learn about the Six-Day War and actually what happened and the events leading up to it. So I... Pull, I fully pulled up YouTube and just started watching a video about the Six Day War. I'll leave a link to the video that I watched in the description in case you guys are interested. So Jordan actually participated. Oh, we have 10,000 10, infantry. That's so good, but I, I do need other stuff. I need more anti-tank guns if I want that much stuff as well. So I probably should start getting anti-tank weapons. Where's the anti-tank? Oh, we can do it. We can do fully combined military. 30 organization. We are spending so much, but we can afford it. There we go. Our army has insane buffs now. I mean, look at all these bonuses. Then I thought it would be funny to condemn Israel in the Arab League, and <laughs> what do you know? Everyone agree with me. Me and the boys denouncing Israel. <laughs> can I re- can I go into my own land? Why is this demilitarized? Because we have to start from the 1960 start date, we don't get any of the reparations that we would have got from part one, because we won the Suez Crisis, but this time we- live from this timeline we kind of lost it, so- but it's okay, it just makes the game harder, which is fine. <laughs> Look at this Soviet aid. Look at all this, man. For a thousand days, we get all these bonuses. And they're not small numbers. They were like 35 to like 20%. Oh, Iraq just declared we're in Q8. What? Did this happen? How many times did Iraq invade Q8? I have historical off, so I'm not really sure if this happened actually in real life. Probably not. I only remember in Iraq invading Kuwait once. Now I have been purchasing so many planes from the Eastern Bloc countries because I want to make sure that I have air superiority over Israel and I will also make sure that they are not just sitting in the airbase and doing nothing because if that happens Israel will destroy all of them with their preemptive airstrikes which they do. Now towards 1967 which would be the year we close the Straits of Tehran, remilitarize the Sinai and Israel retaliates. <laughs> After improving upon my division templates, I got the event for the remilitarization of the Sinai. Okay, so wait. Oh, I was I was worried this wouldn't be uh, demilitarized, but okay. Well, sorry, it wouldn't be remilitarized. But now, ever since the revolutionary government and the flag of freedom have flown over Damascus, the Zionists have battled with our Arab brothers in Golan, yada yada, and now it is remilitarized. Perfect. All right, let's get our troops in there. I bought six new Soviet submarines and I thought they would be very handy against Israel considering they've only got one port really into the Mediterranean. We've finished our last focus that we can do, so now I'm going to close the Straits of Tehran. Tensions with Israel have always been higher since its inception in 1948. The land of Palestine is considered rightful Arab land occupied by the Israeli Zionists. In an effort to weaken Israel, President Nasser has deemed it necessary to close the strategically important Tehran Straits, cutting off Israel from major trade routes, from the major trade route. Okay, there we go, we've closed the Straits of Tehran. 
The latest escalation of the Sinai. Egyptian President Nasser has announced the closing of the straits to all ships destined for Israel, declaring that ships attempting to violate the blockade will be fired upon. Israel did not respond positively to this and tried to launch a Pearl Harbor-like attack on our planes, but we predicted it because I know my history and I watched that YouTube video. My planes were already in the air. Offensive. The cowardly Zionists attempt to, attempt to destroy our air force ended in failure for them. This act of aggression cannot go uncalled for. The leadership approved our leaders, to, our brave forces, to take the battle to the enemy and invade the land they stole in 1948. Onwards to glory. The six-day war in this mod is not a full-scale war. It is a series of border conflicts of me, Syria, and Jordan against Israel, and all three of us must win our border conflicts for it to be a, a victory. A border conflict is significantly more difficult than an invasion for the attacker because we are limited to six divisions, and we can't even use planes or boats. We have to just stick with the six divisions versus their six. Okay, so we got the Syrian victory as well. Now it was just up to our border conflict, and I may have made some adjustments to the Israeli template uh, just otherwise we wouldn't win okay it's impossible but we got the victory and the partial liberation of palestine followed egyptian occupation of west negev and Eliat. the president in cairo received a message from the zionist fortress had fallen this marks the biggest achievement of our armed forces in this conflict we get all the things okay now we should auto oh they're trying to they're trying to counterattack us come on hold it hold it hold it they can't counterattack us, otherwise we'd lose. This was actually my fifth attempt at trying to win the Six Day War. It is so difficult. I had no choice but to make it a little bit easier for me because otherwise we wouldn't even be able to go down this part of the focus tree. Revitalize the Pan-Arabian movement. With the victory over Israel, prestige has never been higher and Arabs across the world look to him for leadership. There we go, under one flag, 300 political power. We've already got enough of that though, so. In the years to come, Pan-Arabism would become more than just an idea, it would become a goal. Now that Palestine is partially liberated, the rest of Israel are actually our cause. So now I was so tempted to just justify a war goal in no time and just fully invade Israel. Take out Israel, technically our land will be connected between Syria and Egypt. We won't have to go by boat. However, I wanted to complete the rest of my focus tree, just in case there's more content with Israel. Oh my gosh, it's Idi Amin. Can we play as Idi Amin? Oh my gosh, we can. Idi Amin. Oh. You can go to war with... Can we go to war with uh, Tanzania? Is it Tanzania? Pretty sure they go to war with Tanzania. Or is it war with Rwanda? No, it's Tanzania. Oh. That is Idi Amin, man. Conqueror of the British Empire. That is so funny. <laughs> That is actually so funny, okay? I love this mod, man. You can play as all your favorite dictators and there's always content. There's actually a movie about this guy that I highly recommend you guys watch. It's called The Last King of Scotland and it's literally about this guy and I don't know why. I think it's because he was very fond of Scotland. It's about this Scottish doctor who goes to Uganda to help uh, the people of Uganda but then Idi Amin takes a liking to him and he becomes his personal physician and then things really go crazy. It's a great movie, highly recommend. Idi Amin had a good relationship with Gaddafi. Where's Gaddafi? Who the hell is this guy? Anyway, yes, the video. We are going to invade Saudi Arabia. And thanks to those six Soviet submarines, we can get naval supremacy. So the invasion begins. Oh, oh, okay. So it actually just put us a, a war. Uh, here's uh, NASA of the UAR has announced his forces will soon cross the border and liberate the Arabs of Saudi Arabia, fresh off the UAR's stunning victory over Israel. We can hire, look at this, we can get mercenaries. Hire Stillian, hire here. Oh, it's a thousand. I can, I can afford it. So we hired some mercenaries and I didn't really know what to expect, but it just gave us divisions like any normal expeditionary force. Control risks. What is that? What are these guys? Sure, we're putting them in as well. So we landed and then I realized I invaded somewhere that wasn't a port. So I had to had to build a port for our invasion. And, but it's okay, Saudi Arabia are weak, so it's fine. <laughs> so there was a naval base there. Okay, I'm increasing my mobilization just to build that naval base really quickly. Nice. All right, Nasserism triumphant. It has become a symbol of pan-Arabism, cooperation and resistance to foreign imperialism. Nasserist ideology is studied in schools. His paintings are painted, him, he's painted on the streets and Arabs across the re region cry louder with every passing day for a united Arabia under the leadership of President Nasser. That's what's gonna happen. Look at this. All of them get nationalist support, every single Arab state. Once we got supply in Saudi Arabia, it was no issue at all. I pushed until they capitulated and we annexed Saudi Arabia. We are officially United Arab Republic. 
the center of the Arabic world. Cairo has overshadowed shadowed the holy city of Mecca as the center of the Arab world. We get 5% stability, which we don't need, but we get a research slot, so that's uh, not too bad. All right. I think we are ready to just start justifying on people. And the first country we were going to attack, you guessed it, Israel. The entire Arab world hates them, so it's fitting that they would be our first target. It is it's their cause, and it'll be very quick. A hundred days? That's not very quick. All right, well, we're justifying. I don't care. Gaddafi, hello. Join our republic. You'll get a, a seat. Now I went back into the Arab League and I wanted to see what I could do to Israel and it turns out I could do uh, quite a bit. I'm demanding an Arab state from Israel. Can I go to war quicker that way? Whoa, Arab League votes to sanction prominent Arab figures. Wait, what did we vote in the Arab League? I thought I I wanted to attempted to push for Egypt to return historical Arab land back to the people or else. Oh look, I got it. I just got this random state here. I didn't know what state what I was looking even looking at. Oh, okay, so you can just demand it. Wait, what if? Oh, what if I should wanted to demand Bathsheba? Now this is just overpowered. I could demand all of Israel's territory if I wanted to, but I I wanted to go to war, so no. Oh, we got it. Look at that. We just got that state for free. Literally, it's just there and there, and that, this Jerusalem, Tel Aviv, and that is all Israel is. That is hilarious. Okay, well I guess we're declaring war now. That they had absolutely no chance. There was no way they had any chance. With Israel dealt with, the monarchists in Jordan, Lebanon, and Iraq were all next in the firing line. This whole time, I haven't been spending any money, so we've got like a hundred billion just do uh, just for doing nothing. We've already got the largest army in Africa, in the Middle East, so I don't really know what to spend it on. All right, I'm gonna. Okay, we're gonna go back to fully combined military because we have so much money. Look at our GDP, 182. You know, we can actually start doing really good stuff. Basic services funding. Look at this. We're actually taking care of our population. Or I could just keep all the money for myself and fund giant statues to be placed in every city around the, the entire Middle East. 300. I've got to wait a year before I can even do anything. I'm going to justify on these guys at the same time. It's taken too long. Then I started getting a bunch of events that included Israel, and I started second-guessing the invasion and justifying if I broke the content or something. But I didn't. It's just a bunch of random events. It's okay. And after a while of waiting, we declared war on Jordan, and it kind of just went how you expected. We won. And now we'll just cut to a montage of me destroying everyone. There we have it, the United Arab Republic. Now, I wasn't going to go all the way to the Western Sahara or to Pakistan, just because it's, there's no content. It's just going to be me justifying and then invading and then justifying and then waiting and then invading and then waiting and waiting. It's just a bunch of waiting, all right? So there's no point. Imagine I could do it if I wanted to, but I just, no, it's a waste of time. Congratulations. You made it to the end of the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.